Hello again, YouTube and Facebook, if anyone's joining me from there. I'm doing another stream of Septimus. We have less lag happening this time, which is good. Um, hopefully we can keep it that way. I thought this time I'd show you a bit more of, of what I've been working on. I've done a bit since I streamed last time, so I've finished all of the Tertius cards. Dup -a -dup -a -dup -a -dup -dup. Um, onto the Secundus cards. I've actually finished the white and orange. I haven't put them in yet. Uh, as you can see, I've been putting all the X's in because I did those first. Um, but, oh, there we go. So, here are some of the Secundus cards that I've been working on. And yay, it's not lagging as much as it did before. It's still lagging a little bit, but not much. So, um, so these ones are going to be some of the harder ones. As you can see, uh, they're getting a bit more difficult than um, the tertius ones. So um, in terms of the numbers, how I'm doing that is, so we've got over here, I'm, I'm using this one, I think I showed before, um, to look at the different levels of dice and stuff like that. Um, is it still showing? Yes, okay, I, th I think it's working. Um, just, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's fine. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so in Tertius, the assumption is that they always have. Um, always have two dice and then sometimes have three dice. So the lowest number I think I had was seven and the highest was 13. Whereas before the highest number was seven. And so I'm taking that again. And so now the lowest number is going to be 13 and the highest number is going to be 19 um, for this round um, in Secundus. So here we've got 16, 14, 15, 17, 18 over here. I don't think I've gotten any, any 19s yet. I um, might have one down here, do I? No, nah, 18. Um, but we also have a new sort of card here, which is trait only. So you cannot pass this card unless you are of that, um, of that color. You can only succeed against that card if you have that color. Um, so it limits it very much in terms of what you can do there, um, which also means that you can't get, get past it unless you have um, more than one movement. Um, because oh, if, if you don't succeed, you have to move backwards. You can't retreat through it, you have to retreat it backwards or do another, another space on the same circular sort of thing. Um, mm, so that's going to make things interesting. Um, so yeah, this, this gives you a bit of a look at some of the different things I've done. Um, this is a bit of a reference to um, Milan and the um, retrieving the arrow from the top of the pole. So using, um, using the combination of two skills is is something that I'm doing with white. So each one of them, each color has a couple of specific things that I'm developing with them. Oh, Monty. Sorry, our dog just wants to come and say hello. Here we go. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> um, so as you can see with Seneca, one of the things is going, okay, you've got no re-rolls. And the other thing is saying that you have to combine skills. Whereas for other ones, um, it's, it's always optional. You're always able to combine skills, assuming that you've got more than one skill available to use. Um, though you can't combine Septimus with any of the other skills. Septimus is always by itself. Um, but you can always combine two different skills um, for example, if one's lower and one's higher and you're 
really good or not so good at the other sort of thing. It might be advantageous for you to combine skills or something like that. Um, but here you have to use the combination of two skills. I actually might need to change that so that it has some more text there. So at the moment it just says you must use those. So if you succeed, so, um, so most of them have either if you succeed or if you do not succeed, but some of them have a special thing as well as that. And so those special things are unique to each different color. So this one has a combination of two skills and going towards having no re-rolls. Um, if you succeed, let's see, arrow pole. We want yeah, this one quite good. If you succeed, you will. Oh yes, all your skill levels are pretty one level lower to two turns. That's kind of crazy. Um speed it's one level higher maybe. So we jump that. CP was skill levels operate one. No, it's going to need to be less text than that. So, this is the other challenge I've got. I've got to fit it in this space. You see, plus five. No, that equals percent. Plus five to the next row. So even that. Add. So it's add plus five to row result. Yeah, so close. <laughs> this, this is the trick. Let's use the combination of two skills. How can I get that done? You must combine two skills. There we go. See, <laughs> this, is, this is what I have to figure around with, you know, playing around with the different words to make them fit. That sort of thing. So this is, this is a bit of a look at what I've got for these these white ones, um, and sometimes I have a very specific idea of what they look like. I mean, the arrow pole is quite obvious because um, that's that's straight from Milan um, as as to what they look like and how you would actually go about solving them. But sometimes I really have no clue. Um, you know, like the infinite room. You know what? how do you solve that or how um, would that look like how would that be constructed i'm not really sure um, but i felt that that was a very white thing um a very cynical thing <laughs> i'm I've just been looking at magic stuff so I'm magic the gathering so i keep thinking in terms of the color pie um which is Kind of a little bit similar to what I'm doing here with the colours, um, except a little bit. This is obviously a bit more diverse. Magic having five colours and this is having seven colours. Um, so yes, and then um, one one thing I'm actually trying to do with with this is that one of the rooms because I've only got four. Um, it's called this one one of each of the rooms for each colour. I'm trying to do as a bit of an element. So I'm trying to go okay, which element would go with each which each of them obviously there's only four main elements and there's seven colors so i go oh okay how am i, I going to make that work um so if we look at the hero cards by the way this was an alternate design that i was thinking of at one point i'll just grab that back an alternate design that i was thinking of at one point um, when I was thinking about having 
the cards physically put on the board. Um, but as you can see, it was an even tight fit. I couldn't put any flavor text on. Um, and it also meant that the board was going to be absolutely massive. Um, it's going to be more like a mat. So I was like, yeah, let's not do that. Okay, so these are our cards. I actually think I've got another, another set of them somewhere that has it. Oh, I've got that in Dropbox. Set this. Three cards. There we go. It's confusing when you've got it in two different folders. Okay, give it a sec and can't because I optimized it for printing as I've been doing with more different ones. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting seeing how close they can print to the edge, because this one is gonna be very printing up quite close to the edge. Okay. So white is air. That's very obvious. Like some of these are quite obvious, like Ignatia is fire, Torrentius is water. Um, and then this is air. Um, and then Petronia is metal. Then I go, okay, which is which one is earth? So part of me goes, well, well it should be Maximilianus because they're green, so that's earth. Um, but it depends on what sense I'm thinking of earth. You know, am I thinking of earth in the sense of plants and stuff like that? In which case, yes, Maximilianus is, is that. Or am I thinking earth as in dirt, as in ground? In which case, actually, that's a lot closer to Aeneas because I've, I've been thinking of them as um, very much to do with bricks and clay and building and construction. And that actually works a lot better with earth. So I put Earth with Aeneas, and I'm putting plant, something more to do with plants with Maximilianus, and then Antalia, I'm doing acid, is the idea. Um, so, yes. Um, and I'm wondering about the possibility after I've, I've finished all this um, in terms of ways I can um, do expansions or things on it. What do you think about that? Um, you know, one of my first things to think about would be, you know, what other heroes can I make? You know, do I create extra tribes, which I don't really want to do, um, because the whole idea is that it's, it's the seven tribes, um, well, each the septum septimus, um, or do I go? Well, this this is what you can work within for one Septimus, but within that there's a bit of scope as to what that hero can look like, or these are some extra abilities that could be swapped in and out. Um, so a bit of customization there for heroes, perhaps, or maybe the ability to create your, so maybe creating your own hero, going, okay, you've got seven skill points that you can use across these skills and these are restrictions for how they can be placed um you know you're always required to have one at least one skill point in, in your skill all this sort of thing um and these are the maxes that you can have and and all that sort of stuff you know? mm. um so there's those are ideas that i've been toying around with as well um so yeah, that was the, the earth room there. Um, and then the two things with, with Aeneas is rolling an exact number, because usually it's rolling a number or higher. So so usually I'd have, with this one, I'd have to roll a 15 or higher if I'm using thought, or a 16 or higher if I'm using Septimus. Uh, I usually make the, the Septimus ones higher because it's quite a, um, quite powerful um getting um septimus ability up high levels so yes um i try to make that a little bit difficult um but that's also um you know an incentive for people to move around and find those um and then some some references that i put in um because because i do put in a few here and there are a bit 
a bit tricky because they're references to things from the modern world. But then I go, well, how would they do that in, in a medieval setting? Because this is medieval um, or, or around that time, sort of thing. Oh, what did you hear, Mont? What did you hear? Oh, oh. Can you see yourself on the screen there? Yeah. See? No. Sorry. Um, yeah, so going, well, how would they do that in a different way? Or how would they understand that? How would they see that? And so this, this card is an example of that. Um, so sliding panels. So, and, and the thing is, when, when people look at this, it's quite possible that a lot of them won't get it. I'm okay with that. Um, but when, when they, if they do, yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, sliding panels. And then the only thing that, that kind of um, alludes to it, what are all these colored square panels? What do they do? So sliding colored square panels. And what this is actually alluding to is the Rubik's Cube. And the idea is that it's a Rubik's room. So you actually have like on the floor and on the walls, um, I just divide it up into these colored square panels that you're moving around and trying to arrange into the different colors and that sort of thing. Um, so that's the, that's the idea. Um, yes. Um, so that's something that I've been playing around with there. And that's been good fun. Um, but yes, now um, I still need to put those two into here actually. So let's do that, shall we? So we have tile runes, arrow pole, runes, arrow pole. Tornado, infinite room. So the tornado was the air kind of room. Um, I don't know how on earth you'd fit a tornado in the room or how you generate that or anything like that. I, I really have no clue. Um, which one was my block space? Block space with the tile rooms. Okay. Um, I'm only doing one block space for this um, because I'm realizing that um, I'll show you on the map. So on the map, because I'm doing double the amount for the spaces. Um, and there we go. Yeah, that's that's all good. Um, so so this is Secundus here. So let's say that, that we're in white over here. So let's say that the blocked space is drawn here. And then the other one that's drawn is the trait only. That's effectively functioning as a blocked space. So there's no way through there at all. Um, so I didn't want to put more than one blocked space in, in there. Otherwise I thought that that was going to be too, too difficult, too tricky. So that's what I did there. Um, yeah, whereas with these other two, I've put in two block spaces. Um, but that's throughout the whole eight. So on average, you're only going to have one or one. Um, hopefully, we'll see how you go. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with this design. It's, it's really nice and simple, but it's quite elegant as well. Um, this thing in the middle, by the way, is the combination of the two different seven-sided stars. So there's two different ways that you can do them, depending on if you're joining the stars by skipping one each time. Or if you're skipping two each time. So So that pattern is made by overlaying both of those. Um, and what that's essentially communicating is within here, you can move from any space to any space. So this is connected to each one of those and both of those. 
um, so that's what that is communicating in that sense. Um, yeah, uh, but I'm, 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 I'm quite happy with, with that design. It's very geometric um, and simple, but it's also, it can conveys a lot as well, I think. Um, so, uh, so okay, so that's XXXX, so that's nice and simple. No, I don't need you anymore. I want you. 16, 14, 15, 16, 14, 15. It's really helpful having this here so I can easily go back and look at other ones and compare them and go, okay, what did I do for the tertius cards in white? What did I do for the secundus cards in white? And make sure that what I'm doing is similar to those so it has the same flavor but it's it's still different enough as well and um, that it has it feels like an added level of difficulty yeah it doesn't and i suppose one of the things i'm definitely trying to avoid is um you know not feeling like um uh, any like, for example, a card in Tertius should be easier than a card in Quartus or something like that. Um, I'm trying to, trying to avoid that. Um, but that's, that's the sort of thing that I'm hoping will come out in playtesting, I guess. Oh uh, yeah, last time I just combined two skills one on my list. Um, I don't think I have the room for that though this time. Plus five R uh, uh, using lots of um, shortcuts in terms of what I'm writing here because this is only for me and, and my notes, so I'm using lots of shortcuts in terms of what I write. So R uh, uh, is roll result. Roll result. Um, I hear WP wall placement. Um, and that sort of stuff. If succeed, tornado was a one roll, skill levels minus two. All skills minus two for one. Fail. And that one was no penalties. One turn. One turn. Which is kind of crazy, um, but that's what I want. That's what I want for these ones, um, particularly because I'm not sure for Primus um, what I'm wanting to do there. You know, if I'm wanting all of these to be if fails, um, because the idea when when you, like, when you succeed, you're getting the crystal. So maybe that is enough of a thing in itself. And I go, well, all of them should be. Um, if fails rather than if succeeds. Um, what is the thought that I'm thinking at the moment? Um, but we'll see how we go with that, I guess. Um, yes, because I still need to finish up all of these ones first. That's, it's coming along really nicely. Um, and I'm hoping that I'll be done pretty much by the end of the week, I think. Um, let's think, um, got today. Today, I reckon I can finish off grey and blue. So I think I can do two of the twos. So it's these day, because these are a lot quicker than the previous ones. And then I'll do 
red and green Wednesday, and then purple Thursday, and then I can start looking at um, my Primus cards. That's gonna be fun. That's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, no, they're also going to be difficult <laughs> um, to cost right um, in terms of how hard they are to beat because I need to make sure that they are beatable by every step bonus. Uh, and that, that is the challenge because if we go back to here um, and you look at, for example, their limits. So you have to get up to level seven here to get four dice. Um, not everyone has up to level seven. So when, I, when I'm in Primus, I'm going at lowest number is now 19. Our lowest number is thir 13 to 19 is um, Sequindus. So Primus is gonna be something like 19 to 25 or something like that um, which is impossible without four dice um, and or even more but the thing is um, going back to sorry, sorry. Um, some of these um, some of these heroes do not get up to level seven in anything so Aeneas does not get up to level seven in anything. Petronia does not get up to level seven in anything. Um, they're the only ones actually. Um, every, everyone else goes up to level seven in something. Um, so that's a challenge where I go, okay, I need to make these doable. And so, um, I mean, part of that, what I'm trying to do is, is making it um, easier for them in terms of like items and stuff that they can pick up that will um, make it easier for them or um, one, of the, one of the new rules that I've added in is that crystals will actually give you plus one to roll result. Each, each crystal that you possess gives you plus one to all roll results. And if you have three or more crystals, you get an extra dice for all rolls. Um, so I'm hoping that will help a lot. Um, and then there are certain cards called the Supremes that give you an extra um, do permanent plus one bonus to that skill, um, but also a plus one to the max amount that it can hit. So, for example, if any of got the Agility Supreme card, that would mean that they had, and they were already at four, for example, that would mean that they were now able to get to five and also at five, um, because it does both. Um, or it can mean if they got Septimus Supreme, and there's only one Septimus Supreme, then they could get their thing up to seven. Um, but some can't use it because you can't go past seven in terms of your skill level you may be able to roll more dice or re-roll more dice um, because that's not limited per se, but what your skill level is at is capped at seven. So Seneca can't get Thought Supreme or Septum Supreme because they're already at seven in terms of the max. Um, Torrentius can't get Agility Supreme. Ignatia can't get Power Supreme. Maximilianus can't get Thought Supreme. And Antalya can't get seven of Supreme. So there's limitations there, whereas Aeneas and Petronia can theoretically get all of them. Um, there are two each of power, agility, and thought, and one of Septimus. Um, so that those are gonna be interesting um, to see how they work. And yes, I'm looking forward to seeing how it all interacts and plays together. Um, but I think I will finish off there for now. Um, hope you enjoyed this little look at how the game is progressing and hopefully I'll have more to show you before too long. So, see ya.